How do you make your salon stand out in a world where the competition just keeps growing? Hey, I am Kayla Swanson and I am your host of the Profitable Salon Owner Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Salon Scale, the ultimate salon back bar management app built by salon owners for salon owners. Salon Scale is designed to turn the salon back bar into a profit center, manage back bar formulas, product cost, and inventory right from your fingertips. And hanging out with me today is a beautiful Katie Whitledge. What's up, Katie? How are you? Oh man, beautiful. I yeah, so beautiful. You. Same to you, my friend. I'm really happy to be with you today. Thank you for having yeah. me. Absolutely. This is Katie's second time with us. So Katie is, you are the founder and owner of Maya, a client recruitment and marketing software. And we, she's actually, so Maya is one of our sponsors with the Academy and it's been a blast to work with you guys. It's been so much fun to just, I love finding people who have a fellow, like just passionate mission for the salons and the people. And so getting to work with you has been beautiful. And we had you on the podcast earlier and it was so fun. So I thank you for coming back. This is round two of hanging out on the podcast together. It's my pleasure. This is so great. I could do this on a weekly basis with you. <laughs> nice deal. It's a, our own <laughs> podcast. Let's just do it. <laughs> I love that. So today we're going to start talking about what does it look like to have a salon that stands out from the rest? I know that there are salons on every corner. There is millions of salons on Instagram and social media, and there's just so much out there. So how do you start to become, what do you look for to become that salon that stands out from the rest or even stands out to the clients you should be uh, you know, you should be um, attracting because you're not for everybody. We can't think that we can have every client out there. But how do you focus on what you offer and then become a salon that you attract exactly who you're looking for? So Katie, give us a little bit like, what are we going to start talking into? What is it? What do people need to start looking at when they're trying to become a salon that stands out from the rest? Well, something basic that every company should do is called a SWOT analysis. And um, it stands for, you know, S. W O T. So S is what are your strengths as compared to your competition? Mm. What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? And what are real threats? Mm. There was a question that was prompted to me, and I can't remember where I heard this or learned this, but it was this. If a salon opened up right next to yours and they put you out of business, what did they do? Hmm. And when I give myself thinking time, which I recommend owners give themselves thinking time every day, you need to ask yourself during those thinking sessions, just better questions and whiteboard it out. Just write it out. Don't judge it. And, and maybe you come up with that innovative idea that takes your salon to a whole other level. What I think a threat is, though, just right off the bat, is that our competition has literally quadrupled since, you know, four years ago, right? So yeah. well, who we thought was competition, that other great upscale, reputable salon in our area, you know, that's how the person, you know, the company or brand that I look at with the SWOT analysis has actually changed. There's a lot of individual suite owners that you don't realize are kind of coming in, breaking in and taking away clients from your salon. And here's another kind of Bummer fact, over 65% of your new clients that come to your salon for the first time will never come back for a second visit. This is a hard oh. truth. So not only is our competition greater, but without a way to ensure retention, of course, I could get into that, right, with Maya, but without that, we're in a really vulnerable time uh, in, in a season with the way consumers are kind of changing their spending behavior. So this is a good time to have this conversation. Yeah, I love that. I love what you said, because I like we do. There's a lot out there even. And I love that you just mentioned even talking about recruitment or um, uh, retention, because I think it's like, yeah, get them in the doors, get them in the doors. But like how much energy are you focusing on getting new people into the doors than how much you're putting the care and attention to the people who have been there, who have stepped foot in? Like, what was their experience? What did you learn from that experience? And how do you keep people coming to your salon? So you not only are you having a pool of new people, but you also have a pool of like, yeah, man, I've got regulars that have been coming to me for years because of the experience that they have at your salon and after and the way you care for them and become a place of sanctuary for them versus just like a rotating door. Like, we don't want that. We, we do want no, new people. We want to definitely be, you know, attracting those new people. But then let's dive into that. Like what, how do you set yourself up to like, um, I keep wanting to say recruitment and it's re retention. How do you keep that retention in people? So what do people, what are the first areas that people should start to look at? Well, something that our company helps salons with is we can do a digital scrub of your brand. And what that means is we kind of look at your brand as compared to your competition and the, through the eyes of Google, 
Mm. So when you think about your digital presence and what, you know, Google is still king. Google is still the place that people go to find the new place they want to do business or, you know, where they're going. So what does Google think of your brand on, in all your digital assets? I think an underrated area that salons need to focus more on is their website. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I remember our podcast that we did before where I spoke about, you know, this point of view of your social media, your brand should have a sexier, cooler social media platform than your team. Because you need to be a place that inspires a players that, wow, what's going on at this brand is, is amazing. And I, and I believe that still the same. So before we even get into social media stuff, really where we drive people typically, no matter where they originally see our brand, if we go link in bio, if, if they're hearing word of mouth about your brand, if they see you when they drive to work every day, because you're located here, no matter what. 95% of website visitors are new clients who have never been to your salon. So your website is this place that needs to be very attractive. And I would also use that as a way to compare to, in your SWOT analysis, what your competition is doing. And I often don't Mm even, you know, once in a while I'll look at local competition, but I'm more so sent the mark of like, what are the top national brands doing? Not even salon brands. Just what are brands doing? What do we need to be do, uh, doing with our website to where it's like a no brainer? A consumer is going to go okay. visit in their Google search a few options that come up when they're searching. First of all, you want to be coming up. So if your yep. search engine optimization is not happening and you don't show up on that list, we already have a problem. Okay. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, everybody go do this. Grab your phone, pull up Google and search haircut in your city and state. If you're not coming up on that list, then we already have a problem. But imagine Mm -hmm. that you are, you know, and we see and we're clicking through to see your website. When consumers come to your website, it should just knock it, it out of the park. Like that should be like a wow factor. This and and you said something important. Not everybody's a good fit. So when I say knock it out of the park, it's that your ideal perfect client is going to see your website and immediately first impressions are made in less than eight seconds. They're going to immediately know, oh, these are my people. This is my type of place. This is where I want to be. Yep. And, the whole vibe. And we kind of, that's like an underrated thing. We kind of do yeah. the bare minimum. We don't want to put a ton of money into a website. I'm going to break the news to you. Building a new website in today's market is going to cost you anywhere between $7,000 or to $25,000. Most of my marketing world agency friends, colleagues, developers throughout the U.S. do not even touch a website build project for less than $20,000. So I'm just I'm setting that tone right off the bat because... If we're going to really be competitive, we have to pay attention to our website. And I think sometimes we're worried about it being really cute and pretty. Well, so is everybody else's. And a lot of salons are doing this like minimalistic look, very neutral, nude tone palette. Well, you're like everybody else. You need to go deep and wide with your website strategy. And it's got to have a little more personality that's going to last 10 to 15 years and stand out from the crowd. Ready to transform your business and improve your salon's profitability? With Lonza's 3-in-1 technology and intermixable shades, your hair color inventory is streamlined with limitless creativity behind the chair. Click the link below to unveil the secret to salon success. Are you ready to increase your retention and revenue and convert website traffic to clients? Then you're ready for Maya. Maya creates better business relationships by pairing the right clients with the right beauty professionals. Use promo code HPSA for your first two months free. Visit joinmaya.com to get started. Sustain Beauty Co. has two of the best tools to help you save water, time, and a bunch of money. Join the clean water salon movement with EcoHead's water-saving shampoo nozzles and scrummy plant-based microfiber towels. Available at Sustain Beauty love that i love what you're saying because like in the in this in the note of like not p- giving the love and energy to your website i mean like we we work a lot with salon owners so if you come into our world like you know you try to join our facebook group we are screening and be like are you actually a salon owner do you want to it like or can you be in this group and it's funny to me or not it's funny but it's like very interesting to me how many times salons don't have 
websites or their websites are really just small or small scale or they look like, yeah, somebody just kind of put one up themselves. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of love into it. Like you don't, you can't see how many teams are on there. Like there's a lot that you just don't understand even in us trying to search. And we search through people's like Facebook pages or their, I mean, their websites a lot. And so you're right. There are people who are like, they're not putting as much love and attention into their website or they're like, well, I got it on social media. Their social media is becoming their new website. But I think that they might like what you're saying is might be missing that like your social media is just, it's, yeah, it may bring people to you, but the website is where people are going to land. If they're going to learn more about you, if they're going to, social media is good, but your website is where people are going to land. So let's start to put some heart and soul into that. I love that. So how, I know you talked, you mentioned briefly earlier, I'm talking about like building a funnel of like when people spot you, they find you somewhere. How do you start to like what how would you start to invite people to build that way to get to their website? Well, of course, I can't br bring up funnels without saying a little something. I won't make this all about Maya, but Maya <laughs> is the most strategic, high functioning digital sales funnel for the totally. beauty industry. So get period. That. End of conversation. Like, right, right? Like here we go. Here's the link to join. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so first off, what is a funnel? So you have to think of a funnel as somebody going from, oh, I know that you exist to I become a buyer and then a customer or a repeat buyer. So you're going to have your people that come and buy from you one time. But a customer is actually somebody who becomes a repeat client, which is the mm -hmm. ultimate goal. And yeah. you want to bring people in through this process, this funnel of going from awareness to now I have an interest, I'm going to make a decision of some sort, and then I'm actually going to come in for my visit. But like you said, we knock it out of the park. We do an awesome job at this visit so that, and we've paired you correctly with the right professional for you. So everything is in alignment. Expectations are met and exceeded. And now I come back over and over again. So yeah. you're taking people through this process, uh, through this funnel process. So, you know, when you think about a funnel, other companies might do something like um, click here to get a free product at your visit, you know, and then you got to give me your name and your email, like some way to capture their information. And then they get this, you know, little voucher or something, little gift card that they can use to, you know, apply it towards their first visit. And that could be its own separate funnel. Like at one of our salons, we actually have a nail salon separate from hair salon. And that salon, we test two different funnel approaches. One is Maya and matchmaking. And the other is spin the wheel. Um, and I got this idea from a friend of mine who owns an urban clothing company. It's wow. very cool. And, um, so you go to the website and it's like spin the wheel to save. And it gives you like, you know, his is like 10% off, 15, 20% off. Mine, I set up all value-based propositions, which mean I never offer a discount. So it's like get a free cuticle oil, get a free lip gloss, get a free bath bomb, get $10 gift card. So it's all these cool, valuable things. That's cool. And they have to, when they spin the wheel, they have to put their email in to then see what they're, what they've won. And then from there, uh, that's a whole different part of the conversation, but that's a way to get people to draw into your brand. And then you want to start marketing them, you know, marketing to them, which marketing is really just communicating with them on a regular basis so that when they are ready to come in for their pedicure, now that it's this beautiful season we're in, they think of you, they come to your brand, they have an incentive to do so. So yeah. there are different strategies for funnels, um, but having one is one thing following up and doing something with the <laughs> yeah. leads is a whole nother conversation. Totally. Attract the people to yourself. I love how you talked about the wheel and I love, we always say that value up, don't discount down. So I love that. And so like when you have a website, what are really key components to have on a website that what people are actually looking for? Well, the second most visited page outside of the homepage of a salon website is the team page. Of course, they want to know shocking. who works here. Yeah, it's like shocking how many people, especially salons, do not have a page that feature their team. And it, remember yeah. I said to go deep and wide. So not only should you have a team page so everybody can learn about and see who your professionals are, you need to have an individual bio page for every single team member. This helps support your SEO 
So this is a win for you. And it's also a win for your team. So think about your team having in their own Instagram link in bio, their website page link that drives them to your website. You know, most consumers, if you think about your own behavior, when I'm on a website, I am going to peruse around. I'm going to click through to multiple different pages. If I check out one artist, yeah, I'm still going to go look at others. But that that is super, super important. And then when we look just at websites in general, the second most visited page outside of a salon industry is actually the about us page. Interestingly, yeah, they want to know. <laughs> so, so writing that in a more strategic way where it's really not about us, actually, like this whole thing on the our about us page is actually about you, the consumer that we love and want to work with us. And I'm saying very specific things that you're going to be like, wow, that's what I love. You're speaking right to me. This is my place. Uh, and there's a really interesting way to create that page where you're actually, it's kind of like a lead magnet where you're you're getting people through another funnel. So yeah. we work with uh, salons, especially on the website uh, strategic side. Every page has a purpose. And every page should have a way to funnel people through in addition to the book now. Because remember what I said earlier, 95% of your website traffic in today's climate, they are new and never been to your salon. Then you have your 5% who are coming there just to figure out what your phone number is to call or book. Oh, I got to come back to book this appointment online. So that's why your website needs to be looked at as one of the most strategic tools to convert those website visitors into those lifetime buyers who come repeatedly, they become a customer. I love that. I love what you said on the about customer. Like, yeah, people want to come to your website. They want to feel like, oh, they get me, or this is a place I want to belong. We've talked a lot on many episodes of just people, like, especially in the beauty industry, like when people come and when they spend the amount of money that they do to get their hair done, their massages, if you spa, barbershop, salon, whatever you have, people spend a lot of money to do that. But it's also, and the reason why they will continue like your job security is because people continue to do that because they want to feel good. They want to look good. They want to. And so when they're going to spend that money, they want to come to a place where they are going to feel seen, heard, understood, taken care of, you know, wherever they're at in life, they're school, like college students, parents, like wherever they're at, they're coming, they're wanting to leave the world that they're in to come and have an experience with you in your salon. And it's, it's a more encompassing You're it's more than them just getting their hair done and walking out looking good. It's them coming to get away. Like I'm last time I got my hair done, took five hours. And so it's like, it's a large chunk of your time. You want it to be a place where like, I'm going to enjoy the environment. I'm going to enjoy the people I'm around. Not even the people working on my hair. What are the other stylists or what are the other nail techs going to look like or talk like? What's the communication about? What is the vibe? And I think you're, you are trying to, before people walk in the doors, they're looking for a little bit of a connection to have with you. And is this a place that I'm even willing to check out? Cause like, you know, what uh, Katie said earlier, like people aren't even your customer until they come back. And so you like, you, you the rotating door, people come in and out of your salon. It's, it's high because people want to check you out. So there's a layer of like getting them to your website. Then there's a layer to get them to check out your salon. And then can you keep them? I would love to circle back, talk about in keeping and building that. Um, I keep wanting to say the wrong word. In retention, in building that retention, Katie, what is what can people start to do to have like, yeah, okay, now we got them to the website. We have, we've talked about how to fix your website. How do people start to retain the people that they're attracting? Uh, well, I can't say this without bringing up Maya again because <laughs> you don't, Look at this. If you don't get that match made correctly the first time, you will not get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm. Consumers just don't do that. They don't want to come back to that same salon. So it's very painful as owners to lose somebody to our competition when you know in your heart there is somebody great here that would be a better fit. We know Mm -hmm. that the top two reasons that clients don't come back a second time are number one, misalignment. And missed expectations is number two. So this has nothing to do with like, wow, you're terrible at cutting hair. Like most people, that is not typical, right? So like we have to get that correctly the first time. But I think we have a second issue. And I want to speak to owners who have seasoned stylists who have maybe become a little complacent. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to members of Maya who were saying we're really struggling with some of, we, we did a huge price increase. We lost um, some clients that were coming to our more seasoned, you know, higher level stylists who were charging now quite a bit more. 
And, you know, instead of them going to some more budget friendly beginning stylist, we, we lost those clients and we want a way to drive them back, which we're helping them with. But one of the things that was interesting is they said, I said, well, what are you, what's their feedback? You know, what are you, what, how are you coaching them? Yeah. And the owner said, well, we're telling them that they have to go back and start, you know, remembering that they need to do the hand massage during the shampoo (laughs) room and all these things. And I was like, at what point did that stop? Like, and they admitted that they were the reason that this is a problem, not their team, because they didn't hold the, uh, the team accountable, no matter if you're a level one or a level 10 at the salon. Like, these are the expectations for every guest for every visit, whether it's their first time or their 15th year with you. And I think that sometimes chivalry is dead and it shouldn't be. (laughs) So we pull out the red carpet for new clients. We try our hardest. And then we sometimes take for granted the people that have been with us and been loyal to us. But here's the thing. Let's now look at who we think is a retained client and why they leave. So the number one reason a retained client will leave is they don't think you would notice anyway. Hmm. Doesn't that like get to the heart? Like, dang it, I don't- We're Forest, born on the salon floor and built for and by hair and beauty professionals like you. Forest is your marketing, your reporting, your reputation management. You need one easy to use system that does it all. Forest, together we grow. Are you tired of not knowing what your hair color is costing you? With Salon Scale, we take the guesswork out for you so you can cover your back bar expenses, reduce your color waste, and generate more profit in your salon. Click the link in the description to get 10% off your first year. And this isn't to shame any salon that does double, triple booking, because like, I think that there's really great strategies for that. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of optimizing your schedule in that way. Um, but you gotta, you gotta look at yourself. You gotta go from a one-on-one physical trainer to now I'm a group fitness trainer. So imagine if I'm one-on-one training of the special bond with somebody, if I'm a group fitness trainer and I've got 25 people in my classroom, how do I make everybody feel as special as they would if they're one-on-one. There is a way to do it. So double, triple booking is awesome if it's done correctly in the way that you serve, communicate, and treat your guests. But the issue is that we lose our consistency and the special things we did when we were working hard to build our clientele for people, we leave it to the wayside when we think we've kind of arrived and we get too complacent and settle into, uh, and then now we have a shift. So I think a lot of people are going to be talking about this because we've seen a shift in consumer spending. And now we're out working hard to get new clients again. I love what you said about that. Cause I think that that's so true in terms of like, yeah, you've had a customer coming to you for a long time, expecting a certain, a certain, you know, a uh, way that your, her appointment's going to go, their appointment's going to go. And then they show up and every time there's something shaved off and something shaved off and then you raise your prices and like, well, the value doesn't even feel like I've, I've already been feeling like I'm not getting the treatment I was, was, and now you're raising the price. doesn't feel, feel right. I have a story when I, I, my dental hygienist, she always, whenever I go get my teeth cleaned, it's super random, but I love it. She, I, she has this like wax warmer where I put my hands in the wax, take off all my rings. And I, my hands sit in wax while I'm getting my teeth cleaned. And I love it. Well, the last time I went there, she didn't ask me if I wanted it. She didn't offer it to me at all. And I'm just like, do I offer? Do I ask? I'm like, so you, cause you only go like every six months, right? At least I only get my teeth cleaned every six months. And I'm like, I'm looking forward to that. I'm like, oh man, I'm not wearing rings today. I left them in the car. I already knew to expect it. And you get used to something and then it's not there. Like that deficit, you feel it. Yeah. So like what you just said, I think it's so powerful. Make sure you guys hear this is like you bring in all the new people. You focus so much energy and love and like passion into your new people. They come into your salon and we're going to take care of them. We're going to show them a good time. And then once they're hooked, they're like, okay, they're here now. Let's move on to the next new people. And you start to forget that's like, okay, well, are you still taking care of the people who are there? Because honestly, your, your people who are coming in consistently, like they are just as much the culture of your salon as all the new, uh, as your staff, as you, what your, you know, the paint on your walls, just as much the culture of your salon is the clients who are repeat people who are customers that come in constantly because they're in the chair as well. The new person's getting their hair done and what's the environment like for them and how they've seen other people be treated in your salon. And I think that that is such a powerful thing, Katie. I love that you just mentioned that. And I love that you just mentioned the culture fit. I actually have literally never heard anybody say that of like, is this client a culture fit for us? Mm -hmm. Such a cool way to look at it. I love that. 
Yeah. Cause you just want to, you want to build a place. Like I just really see, like, I'm not, I know I don't, don't do hair, but I get to work in this industry and get to meet these amazing people. And just the culture and the places and the things that we get to experience within this industry is beautiful. And, you know, I get my hair done and I go and, you know, get my nails done. And you do, you go looking for the experience of like, you know, the champagne they bring you when you're getting your nails done or like the little things that like, man, I feel like I'm taking care of me and I'm getting pampered in the process. Mm-hmm. And I love that that is all encompassed into to, you know, the way we build our salons. And so I hope you hear that in this. I love that a lot. That's beautiful. So tell me a little bit as we start to wrap up a little bit, what are some ways like as people like, listen, I always like to like leave people with something to take away today. Like how can people walk away from this episode and start implementing things? Where should they start to focus? Where should they start to put their attention? Mm, You know, it's hard to sometimes be as close to your own product or brand to see what's the, what I call a BFO, which is a blinding flash of the obvious. <laughs> yeah. um, so you might want, you know, a professional's opinion on it. So I would reach out to your um, designers, your development team, who helps you with your website. You know, certainly Maya is available for you to do a, that scrub and digital audit. Um, I love that. I, here's what I want to, I want to give you check out if I was going to say, here's a website that is knocking it out of the park. I've said that multiple times now. It must be because it's we're coming up on baseball season. Yeah, um, nice. But like, it, it is a brand refresh, all strategic things in place. So go, and this is not Maya, this is Be Inspired Salon. So it's B is in boy, E, inspiredsalon.com. Be inspired mm. salon.com. Go and check that out. Um, a two location salon in Madison, Wisconsin. And it happens to be one of the salons that I own. And, uh, but I'm really proud of the brand refresh we did. You know, we, we hit this 13 year old mark where we're like, what are the next 15 years going to look like? We are about to open a second location. And it was this really great opportunity to take this same name but what's the new logo going to look like that looks like the next 15 years? How does this represent who we've become, how our culture yeah. has evolved over time, how freaking cool we feel like we are and how much fun we have. And it was just such a fun project. I am thrilled. Like my Maya development and branding team worked on this. Um, it's just amazing. And I, I'm very, very proud of it. So I want to share that with everybody. It has all the pieces. So if you go there and you see something you love, you like, um, you could also use that as a place to share with your team that you already work with. Like, hey, here's we kind of want to do something similar to this approach. Yeah. 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 I love that. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. I love I totally feel that we're literally in the meantime in the right now trying to redo our website. And so I love we're in that project right now. So it's like I think that it does matter because like we I mean us, all that we said today, I mean, even us as our company, it's like I, our website was created like 10 years ago and you kind of do you're like, oh, well, it's there and I have some of the other things to focus on. Like we'll get to it eventually. And then finally, we'd all had a point where like, okay, our website doesn't represent us anymore. We need to go and change it because we like people, you know, we, people drop off our website or it's like people are like, oh, do you have a website? You're almost like, oh, I don't really want to give it to you because it's not really that great. Like go see your Instagram, go see our Facebook because mm. we put so much heart and soul mm-hmm. into those platforms. And so it's easy to give out that. But then it's like, yeah, then how are people going to get all the resources that we have? Because your website really, you can offer so much on there. And I think we underutilize utilize that, which I love that we talked. I love that that was represented here. And so focus in on put some love into your website, put some love into what is the experience that people are getting after they even come into your salon to build that retention with them, to be able to have people that aren't just walking your doors for the first time, but they're repeat customers and they buy into your culture, be not because you're selling them on something, but because they feel a part of it themselves. So it's like, this is a place where a part of me belongs. Cause I think that that getting into that mindset of what is your avatar? Who are you trying to create? Don't just start trying throwing spaghetti at the walls and grabbing any customer that will walk by your door, get really intentional about who is it I'm trying to attract. And then do I have the stylist of people that will attract that? Because people are the, like, you know, Maya, they they um, connect you with the, your right stylist. And that's such a crucial part of it because you want to pair people up with the right person. Because if they come in and their first, tr- their first time in their chair and this person is super compatible to their interests and they spend three hours talking about the things that they enjoy, they enjoy, like, you know, you can write in there, like, do you like talking? You prefer to be in silence? Because like, I love like for me, I go to massage and they will not stop talking. 
it. And I'm like, I'm not the type of person to be like, shh, I'm trying to relax. And so knowing those things ahead of time to preemptively be like, I know what this person is expecting when they walk in and then you give them exactly what they're expecting. How beautiful is that? So hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. Katie, thank you so much for coming and sharing your expertise. I always enjoy our conversations. It's been beautiful. Ah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Absolutely. And we'll put her website on the description so you can check it out. Her new beautifully designed website. And if you want to know more about Maya, we'll also have that website in the description. And we'll see you next time on the Profitable Salon Owner Podcast. You've been listening to the Profitable Salon Owner Podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a review, and check us out at ProfitableSalon.com for more episodes, content, and to help you turn your salon into the business you've always dreamt of.